All right, so now for problem number 25, 25, let me read it out loud. It says, what is the absolute pressure at a depth of uh, 10 meters in a lake, and what is the gauge pressure? Well, now, the funny thing is, is that we already did this problem in problem number 21, but we'll do it again. So the absolute pressure, there's a formula on page, I don't know what page it is, it's in your book. But we have the atmospheric pressure, and then we have pressure due to water. Okay? And in problem, yeah, this is problem number 25. In problem number 21, we know that the atmospheric pressure is just 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth, right? And that's Newton meters oh, Newton per Newtons per meter squared. Now to find the um, to find the pressure of the water, we need the density of the water rho and the acceleration due to gravity g and the depth that we're under the water. Okay. So now the uh, let's label some of those things. So. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. And we know what G is. G is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. And then H, if they said you're diving down 10 meters. Now what this means is, and I kind of talked about this on 21, and that's why I assigned 25 again. If I'm in the water, that's the surface of the water, and I'm down here, and this is me. That's my scuba gear. And the distance from here to here is 10 meters. What I have is I have a bunch of water that's being pulled towards the center of the earth. Okay? And the only thing that's applying pressure to my body is the water molecules directly above me. That pressure is this, which is really this, and that's based on the density of the water. But in addition to that pressure from the water, up here, I have air molecules. Now they're not as dense as water, but they're there. Every take your hands and do this. What do you feel? Resist. You feel, <laughs> you feel air pushing against your hand. So you don't, you're not, you don't feel it, but there is air pressure pushing on your body. And so that's what this number represents, the air pressure pushing on your body. <coughs> so to complete this, to find the absolute pressure, we would say that the absolute pressure then would be the atmospheric pressure which is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth Newton per meter squared plus the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed times 9.8, the acceleration due to gravity, meters per second squared times 10 meters. Okay? And then I just multiply that all out. Now, just like problem number 21, this, this right here ends up becoming like 0.9, uh, well, it's actually 9.8 times 10 to the fourth. This whole thing right here ends up becoming 9.8 times 10 to the fourth, which when you add that to this, it becomes 1.99. Um, times 10 to the fifth, I'm sorry, I forgot my times 10 to the fifth. Wait, is the 1.1, is that newtons per meter squared or cubed? Yeah, so yeah, it, newtons per meter squared. If, if we were to go through here, remember that um, newton is a force, right? Yeah. So force is newtons, right? But remember that's mass, which is kilograms, times the acceleration of something which is meters per second squared. Well, when you multiply this all the way through, 
you're going to get this meter and this meter on the top. So you're going to get a meter on the bottom. You got you end up with meters. Um, you end up with meter squared because this meter cancels with this meter, and then you get the kilograms per meter squared or kilogram per second squared. But we lose one of these meters somewhere. Where am I losing it at? Somewhere in there we're losing. You have meters cubed. Meters squared, you get the meters on the bottom. So this is, it's got to be newtons per meter squared, right? So newtons is the same as kilogram meters per second squared. And so I'm going to take that and I'm going to put a meter squared on the bottom, which if you cancel that out, right, if I say newtons per meter squared, then this meter cancels one of these meters. So as long as I have kilograms per second, um, per second squared per meter. So I have this kilogram will go up on the top. This, this will be this m times this m will give me an m squared on the top, which will cancel with two of these, which puts my meter on the bottom, and then I have my second squared on the bottom. So that's how it cancels out. So uh, newton meters, newtons per meter squared is actually equal to Pascal. Okay. So from dimensional analysis, it all works out. Does that does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Huh? No, now that, that was only part A of, of question 25. It says, what is the gauge pressure? That was part A. So now we want to know what the gauge pressure is. Now the gauge pressure is just going to be the, um, the pressure of the water, but I want to talk to you about gauge pressure conceptually, and I want to show you... So open your textbooks to, let me find the page here. Um, it's like three, three something. So if you go to page 324, it says that pressure P can be measured as an absolute pressure, which is what we just calculated. And it says you may, you may measure pressure using pressure gauges like a tire gauge, all right? And air pressure in tires is pretty common. So such gauges uh, are appropriately referred to as the measured gauge pressure. Now, a pressure gauge registers only the pressure above or below atmospheric pressure. That makes sense? So when they say gauge pressure, you're kind of ignoring this. So my gauge pressure is the stuff outside of um, atmospheric pressure. So this right here is your atmospheric pressure, so if you ignore that, it's 9.8 times 10 to the fourth Pascal. So this is A, and this is the absolute pressure, right? And then this is part B, which is the gauge pressure. So we don't need to count the pressure twice, right? So if I had a gauge, the gauge will be made in atmospheric pressure. And so if I created a gauge in atmospheric pressure, then I don't need to count the atmospheric pressure twice. Does that make sense? Because the way the gauges work,